Hey neighbor, boy, I'm sure enjoying this fall weather. I finally feel like getting outside and doing something. The weather's gotten nice and get up in the morning time, you feel that little nip in the air, makes you want to get out there and get in the garden. I normally come up here early in the morning, work a little bit, and I work some late in the afternoon best I can. And uh, today we're gonna do a little garden walkthrough, show you what we got going on, and we're gonna plant some strawberries there at the end. And I got an interesting way I'm gonna plant these strawberries, so hang around with that. First of all, we got our multiplying onions going right here. Probably seen them. We got, we got this patch and a little smaller patch over here. They're doing real good. Got a few weeds coming back up. I run the wheel hoe through here the other day. I need to get back in here and do some more weeding, but these things grow like crazy. I love growing these multiplying onions because they grow so quick. And man, they just, uh, they fun to come out here and look at. And we're gonna be harvesting some of them, eating them in the next few weeks. Growing this primary as a seed crop for spring and next fall. So all these that you see right here, which is one plant, will be a big old cluster come springtime. And we'll either sell some in the springtime or we'll hold them to the fall. You people up north, see so y'all can plant these in the springtime, but us people here in the deep south, we gotta plant them in the fall. So we're trying to figure out the best way to do that. We may sell some in the spring and wait and hold some of our inventory to fall. But these things just get bigger and bigger and bigger. The tops is looking good. We got this new variety right here, this little red multiplying onion we grew in this year, first time. Tops look a lot different than the old Tom onion, but it's, uh, it's coming along and it's bunching up a little bit more. It's gonna be fun to see how it turns out. Got two rows of these potato onions. If you don't know what a potato onion is, look it up. It's got a bigger bulb on there than our tom onion does. These things have really popped as well, growing quick, and they're multiplying too. I had never eaten any of these potato onions, uh, so I'm just gonna be interested to try them against those other two varieties this year. See, the actual taste is different. And I got my greens that I planted with my horse, new drill hopper. Uh, I think I did a video on that here a while back. We got mustard greens, we got rutabagas, and we got turnip greens. And I got a row of spinach over there, folks. And I burnt my spinach with fertilizer. I may have to end up replanting it. Had a good dig in stand, but I got a little overzealous with the uh, nitrogen there, and I think I burned it up. Still got some out there, but I may give up on it and replant it. Spinach will do fine planting this time of year, and, and it'll take a good bit of cold weather. You know, these greens right here, here it is the end of October. These are going to be wonderful for Thanksgiving. So my timing's going to be good on this right here. And this is some hangover from a summer garden. Folks, this is uh, cotton. This ain't your ordinary cotton. This is an heirloom variety that I planted a row of. I actually planted two rows of it back during the springtime. And this is Sea Island Brown. I don't know why I planted it, but I did. I just wanted to see if it would grow off. And it, it's brown, unlike our regular cotton, this snowy white. This brown cotton here has got a little bit of a story behind it. Whether you believe it or not, I'm not sure I do, but it says back in the day, back when we have slaves in this part of the country and plantations, they wouldn't let the slaves grow the white cotton. They made them grow the brown cotton. Sounds a little out there for me, but that's what the story is. Sea Island Brown. And it's a brown cotton, just like you see there. So if anybody's out there that's into making their own thread or whatever, I think this would be interesting because you wouldn't have to dye it. You could keep it that same color. Now the question is, what am I going to do with it? I haven't made my mind yet. I don't have a way of getting these seeds out of here. I probably won't grow it again, but it was fun to grow this year. I made a pretty good crop of it. And we got some top pick peas. These top picks is about, we've already harvested them twice. Uh, they about ready to uh, for their final harvest here. We eat me a belly full of them last night. I want you to look at the way these things load up on top pick, and that goes back to the name of them here. It's a great variety, probably one of my favorite pea varieties. Uh, rabbits ate about a third of my plot before I got it up, but off this little bitty plot here, we've already picked three five gallon buckets, and there's a lot more on here to be picked. So for just the two of us, this was a plenty. White flies was in there pretty good, but it didn't affect the uh, the yield a lot. Made a heck of a crop, and I've yet to see the first one that was stung up. And our zinnia patch is still blooming. Those binary giants on the other side, these some volunteers that come up right in here. These things have probably lasted longer than they normally do. We still got a lot of blooms out there, but they're probably on their way out. 
This is a blackberry that I planted this year. I bought this as a tissue cultural liner. Tissue culture liner. It was a little bitty plant early in the springtime. Grew them out in the greenhouse. Planted them in the garden. They've done extremely well. A variety called sweetie pie. I've not grown this variety before. It's a thornless variety that comes highly recommended. Interesting to see how it's going to grow off. I just got out here yesterday and run me some wire. Try to get these runners up. We're going to try to train them so that they stay up so we can harvest them and manage those vines well. But I love growing black blackberries in the garden. I think everybody ought to have them a little blackberry patch and preferably the thornless type. Well, here in my raised beds, I'm trialing three new varieties of seed breeders that sent me to try out. This is a bunching onion right here. And a bunching onion means it gets about as big around as your finger there and you pull it and eat it. These things grow off pretty quick and we'll be eating these probably around Thanksgiving or so. They look pretty thick in there, but that's okay. That's where they're supposed to be. They don't get real big, don't need a lot of room. Bunching onion. And then I got a new variety of beets we're growing right here and a new variety of carrots that we're trying out to see if they're gonna make the cut. Now this is where you've seen those raised beds. This is part of my little 20 by 20 garden spot here. I got this 20 by 20 spot so I can plant in it and just show people how much you can grow if you don't have a little bitty spot here. I got my drip tubing irrigation. I laid it here back there in the springtime and we've got it right where we want our rows. So now I'm getting ready to work it up, and all I do is simply take my staples up, take my irrigation system, move it out of the way. I'm gonna work my ground right here, get it tilled up, get it amended well, and then I'll just take that irrigation system and move it back in. So that irrigation system I can use for several years. And I got this plot right here. <laughs> this happened kind of accidentally, but you probably can't hear it, but the bees are working this buckwheat like crazy. What I did is I had buckwheat in here, the last crop, and it reseeded, and I come in here and planted super beef flacilia. So underneath this buckwheat, I got flacilia there. Well, the flacilia is gonna take a lot more cold weather than the buckwheat is. So first good frost we have, it's gonna take my buckwheat out, which is gonna be okay. Then I'm gonna have my flacilia underneath it coming up so my bees continue to have something to eat on. It wasn't planned, but I think it's gonna work out okay. So we got a tray of our sweet onions growing off in the greenhouse here. Now these are our bubbling onions that we're gonna plant next month and we're gonna harvest next year and make those big old sweet onions. Plant them in my 338 tray that we always recommend here. Now what I've noticed is seven to 10 days is the perfect time to go back in there and take your scissors and clip these off. You can see right there, I clip them off to about three inches high, seven to 10 days, according to how fertilizer will be shot back up. We wanna go in there and trim them again. Reason we want to do that is we can make that bulb there bigger. They're rooting in pretty nice, but they still got a ways to go. We want them to get a little bit bigger before we transplant them out in the garden. And here's some more stuff we're in the middle of transplanting here. We got all kinds of stuff planted in here. We got purple sprouting broccoli. We got uh, cauliflower. We got lacinato kale, green boy cabbage, minute man broccoli couple different lettuces, a romaine there, this brave heart, and then this starfire lettuce here. I planted some of these yesterday in our uh, garden tower thing down there, green stalk, and uh, got some more of these that I'm gonna plant out in my garden out here. And I wanna show y'all this one right here. Planted a few of these yesterday, but this is top chop collard. Variety we just started carrying last year. I love this variety because it's heat tolerant and it don't bolt very bad. Look at that root system right there. I grew that plant in in four weeks. These things are very vigorous and uh, these cool weather crops such as collards, if you treat them right, you can grow a nice plant in just no time. Four weeks, look at there. Now these are ready to go into the dirt. This is a good variety here. It's a mellow flavor, real similar to a uh, top bunch. It's just more heat tolerant. Looking at the two of them, as far as the way they grow off, can't tell a lot of difference in them. Both of them are what we call smaller bunching collards. And, but this one does seem to be more heat tolerant. So I, I'm becoming real fond of it. Got a flat here of a kale called blackjack that I'm trialing out. Uh, some folks from High Mow and Seed told me I had to try this one right here. So I wanted to try this one. This is gonna be a good one. I think it's real similar to Lacinato but I think it's gonna be better. But I'm growing a crop of this out and I'm gonna compare it to the Lacinato. Lacinato is my favorite kale, so it's gonna to have to be a good one to, to hang in there with Lacinato. I think it's gonna uh, 
according to all reports I've seen and read, it's going to outperform. Then I just got some red Russian filling in right here. I got this old styrofoam tray here that had some damage to it, so I use this to plant my celery in. I think this is the same cell size as our 162 tray. Folks, this is tango celery. First year, me growing celery in the greenhouse. Now this has done pretty good. Celery seeds are small, they're hard to get just one in there. Some of these cells, I got two in there and I gotta go back and thin out. Now I didn't plant them two rows there, so, uh, but besides that, I got really good germination. They are slower than brassicas to come up. Probably another 10 days to get these things emerged. So they are slower, have a little patience with them. But we started growing celery last year here on the homestead. It was wonderful. So if you've never thought about growing celery, this tango variety is a good one. All right, so now it's time to plant our strawberries. We got strawberries in. We sold most of what we had, but it saved me a little bit back. We got a few more to sell, but strawberries are a little different than most of the other crops will grow. They like to have some type of mulch, whether it be straw, plastic, or weed barrier. It just performs better with a type of mulch. You can grow them without it, but I found it's better to have something on them, protect them, protect them from the cold somewhat and keep the weeds out of them. They just do better. So I'm gonna give you an idea of what you can do as far as mulch goes. Plastic, I'm not a big fan of that. I've tried it before. It just tears on me. It's hard to work with and all that. Straw was pretty good and straw would be my next second choice. Problem with straw is uh, sometimes, especially wheat straw, you can have some weed seeds in there but it works pretty good. It's biodegradable, so you can work it back into your soil. So that's a good choice. Weed berry, such as this product right here, is probably my favorite. Now what we've got right here, folks, is our Lazy Garden Kit. We have two sizes. This one is the largest, which is the 15 by 30. And this is one piece of ground fabric, and this is woven so that water will pass through it. What's neat about this is it's one piece and it's already got all the places cut in it. So this right here has been cut with a hot knife so it won't fray. Hey, Mega Jane. And it's already pre-measured out everything. It's got some X's in it. It's got some slits in there. Last year, when I put this down, I planted some brassicas and carrots and radishes in here. Had my winter garden in here. I just took everything out. Come summertime, I planted some African drum gourds in this whole thing. So you could grow gourds or pumpkins on a bed like this right here. But I'm gonna use it this fall to plant my strawberries in. I'm planting a whole 15 by 30 of strawberries in this spot here. Drip irrigation, you can buy this kit that comes with this. It's plug and play. I've got this one in here. Now some of these I'm gonna have to straighten up a little bit, but I'm gonna wait till I get through planting to do that. So let's figure out how many strawberry plants I can plant in this 15 by 30. Half of it has slits in it and half of it have X's in it. But you know what? I'm gonna utilize all of it for my strawberries. I'm just gonna maybe stagger them a little bit different. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excuse me, seven rows of slits. We're gonna come in here and probably plant three plants per slit right there. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times seven is what, 63? So we've got 63 plants we can plant on this side. Let's look at our X's. All right, so we're now down to the X's. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of X's. So we got half of it in X's and half of it in slits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight times seven is 56 that we can plant on our X's and these X's are two foot apart. So if mine and Jared's math is right, that's 119 plugs we can plant in here. Well, this week was strawberry week for us. We got a huge load in and we've been shipping them out. This whole area here was full of strawberries. We had over 100,000 plugs out here and we done shipped most of them out. We got another shipment going out Monday that's gonna take care of most of these. This is a strawberry plugs right here. Not bare root, but plugs. And I'll show you here what they look like. Now on strawberries, it's just normal to see some spots on the leaves and you're gonna see a brown leaf every now and then. That's just the nature of strawberries. Don't let that bother you a whole lot. Strawberries are extremely resilient. You can even plant these things bare root. Two or three days old, they'll be fine. These plugs have a survival rate that's way better than what bare root is. They are tough. If they get beat up a little bit, don't worry about them. Just plant them. They'll come out of it and do fine.
And just like that, we got 119 plants in this 30 by 40 Lazy Garden Kit. You know, the Lazy Garden Kit could be used to break things up. You can plant all kinds of stuff in there. As we said, we got slits for things you want to direct seed, carrots and radishes and beets. And you got these X's here that's two foot apart that work perfect for broccoli, and cauliflower and cabbage. But using it all for one crop works pretty good too. And here we're doing it with strawberries. Got a big patch of strawberries there. Got the irrigation up. I got the irrigation on. See it dripping out right here? Puts that water pretty quick. One gallon per foot. Tuck two emitters every foot. An emitter every six inches. So we've got irrigation there. We're going to use our Hall's fertilizer injector to put it ahead of the uh, line right here, right above our filter there. So we can shoot all our fertilizer in our drip irrigation there. Weeds are going to be in control. We're going to keep them in strawberries nice and clean. And we're going to have a big strawberry crop come fall if we can keep them in birds from eating them.